Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're back here at the Class D amplifier. What I want to do today is some of you guys have noticed those spikes in the FFT or the spectrum, which is noise, right? And so I was going to do a video on that and try to see where that noise is coming from, see if it's really coming from the Class D amp, from the power supplies powering it, the signal generator, or just bad connections, or really from the amplifier. Well, as I was doing that, I decided to do a quick video on uh, the GW and the Pico, showing the performance difference. Because as I was looking into it, I saw some differences and I thought I'd share that with you, okay? So we're not going to really delve into finding where or what the issues are. Let's just look at the difference between these two instruments, okay? Almost every scope you get today has FFT, or they should. Uh, FFT is awesome, Fast Fourier Transform. It's a way of doing a spectrum analysis. To do this, you used to have, a, have to have a, both an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer if you want to look at the spectrum. But then, scope started acting, adding the FFT function, and it used to be really expensive. I remember Tektronix scopes would have this little module you plug in. That little module costs as much as some of these scopes. <laughs> so things have gotten a lot more affordable, and they're even better. And so the FFT on this MixSig is really nice. FFT on the GW is nice too. But the GW also has a spectrum analyzer built in. And that's just an application. Basically, it turns in the, uh, the FFT to behave more like a spectrum. You know, it, it just does a lot of automation. With the spectrum analyzer, a lot of times instead of fiddling around with the the FFT like you sometimes have to. The spectrum, you could just say I want the frequency to start at 20 hertz and at 20 kilohertz. Or I want the middle band to be 10k and the bandwidth to be 20k. So it was, you know, it was easier to set them up. The spectrum on the GW is like that and it is like that on this too. And also the way you read information off of it, just a lot of the way it operates is different than an FFT. It's just easier with this spectrum. And so, yeah, the GW has that built in that Pico does as well. So I want to show you the differences between those, okay? Okay, so another thing is I know that this FFT stuff, the spectrum, all that is new to a lot of people. So let me just kind of go over that real quick, try it in an easy way maybe. Let's see. Okay, so with an oscilloscope, as you're reading the voltage with time, say a one kilohertz signal, the one kilohertz is going up and down one kilohertz, and as it's changing amplitude, the scope's drawing that signal, right? Well, with the FFT portion, what it's doing is at one kilohertz, it's instead of going with time, it's just going with frequency. It comes across 10 hertz, 100 hertz, one kilohertz, plots that point, and instead of a whole bunch of points like the Bode, it just plots uh, like bar graphs. It's just plotting point, you know, a little point. And so then it goes across frequency. If it's a nice clean one kilohertz, it goes across, it doesn't plot anything else. But let's say that one kilohertz has a 10 kilohertz ripple on top of it. Well, then it goes across one kilohertz, plots how many volts is at one kilohertz, goes across at 10 kilohertz, goes, oh, we have 10 kilohertz component too and oh it's this much voltage so it plots a little point at that amplitude and it goes across and you can get those in volts or in decibels usually we do them in decibels because often the voltages that we're interested in the signals are really big compared to the really small signals and distortion 100 times thousand times bigger it's like looking at you know big huge thousand story buildings in a city and trying to uh, pick out a little person to see detail on both you can't. But log kind of crunches everything down and expands the little things so you get a little more detail in everything. Okay, So that's why we use the log. So the spectrum is really useful because it goes, FFT, the fast Fourier transform, mathematically goes and looks at a signal and breaks it down and picks out all those frequencies and shows you all the frequencies that signal might have in it, okay? So if we're 
putting a one kilohertz in an audio amplifier, we hope to only see a spike of one kilohertz. If there's, you know, some noise, which are harmonics often, harmonics are just multiples of that frequency, and that's usually what we see. And that's why sometimes we also see noise that's outside of those harmonics. That's why we say harmonics, THD plus noise, to capture everything in that bandwidth, okay? So, when you're doing the FFT, it's going across and it's plotting. It's mathematically breaking down that waveform and showing you everything that it has in it, okay? That's what it's doing. And those filters, the Blackman and all that stuff that we get to choose from, what those are is that mathematical formula is really a detailed, complex formula. And it, what it wants to do, it's kind of like the analog filter. Uh, to get the resolution to really know the, you know, what's going on within some defined resolution mode, it has to have a filter, like, say, a digital filter, but it's a mathematical filter. And, and those are some kind of functions that give you some filtering that basically filter off the math function, okay? But when they do that, some of them give a better representation of what the amplitude are. Some give a better representation of the frequency. And so, um, and then some do a little bit of both. They might do the amplitude a little bit better than the frequency or vice versa. So depending on what proportions of accuracy you want, you choose which one of those functions you want, okay? And that's what those are. So let's come over here, take a look at these two scopes, and let's just see what we see. All right, guys, I'm gonna zoom in, but first I just want to show you kind of some of the setup. Uh, so we're, we're coming to channel two. We're AC coupled. See, it says channel two right here, AC coupled, inverts off, full bandwidth. Um, we got the one meg input, so we got 50X probe, okay? Now up here, eight volts, RMS almost 7.99. Wonder if I can just creep that up, and make it eight volts. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's just kind of bounced around. So that's eight eight watts into eight ohms. All right. So let's go look at our spectrum. I'll keep this window out for just a moment longer. So uh, amplitude 20 dB per decade, one division. That means we're one division above the zero line. dB volts RMS. Okay, bandwidth, we got resolution bandwidth set as max as we can. And up here it's on auto, and we're using this filter, Blackman. There's four different filters, and we're using Blackman. Okay, now what that resolution does is it gives us, well, I'll show you, it gives us 4 hertz resolution. And kind of explain that a little bit. But center frequency is 10K, spans 20, or the start 0 or and the stop is uh, 20 kilohertz. So you can set it up either way. Really nice how you can do that. And then let's turn off these windows now. And then the yellow across the bottom shows the setup. It's uh, channel two, 20 dB, one division. Center frequency is 10 kilohertz. Spans 20 kilohertz. Resolution bandwidth is four kilohertz. And so that bandwidth just means that Anything that's four kilohertz separate from each other, it can mathematically, you know, find. Otherwise, it kind of, every four kilohertz, it takes all that information and puts, it kind of muddles it together. So, right here, that little green diamond, that correlates with that green diamond right there, and it goes and finds the highest peak, which is right there. And it says it's a one kilohertz, 17.6 dB volts. All right, so that's two kilohertz. We got a little spike, if you can see it. At three kilohertz, we have a little spike, and they're between 40 and 20 dB. Which brings up the other thing. This is 60 dB, and that's 40. So this line, mostly, all that noise mostly stays between 40 and 50 dB. All that noise, that's called the noise floor. Some people call it the grass and the little spikes sticking out of the grass, kind of like weeds, you know? So you got 
uh, little weeds popping out of your grass and you can kind of see them there's a few spikes there's two one here above 40 now remember this is 20 so this guy's getting pretty close to 20 it's about 30 db probably 26 db and then we have a couple here that are close to 20. okay so now let's go look at the pico all right so now looking down here at the pico what we have here is this top window up here is a scope shot all right so i've got this top window kind of shrunken down and it's just so we can see the signal and then i have the spectrum window here you can open up more views or more windows by just doing this you know going to this guy so it's pretty nice but that's all we need and then i've got some measurements set up i just went to this selected some measurements and they're right down here i've got the amplitude that's 17.8 so that's reading about the same as the gw and so i've got a thc measurement on this one and that's 0.74 it'll move around as it updates the screen and signal and noise is minus 41 and that's from this 17 db down to probably this bike or this bike this is i think the 60 hertz power and this is what we saw i think on the gw now the gw i think it showed it right here on the two kilohertz so this guy's showing it just off a little bit here's a big point i want to point out is minus 40 is right here okay so minus 50 is right above this line right here there's minus 52 so minus 50 is the ground floor of where we saw the gw so all this right down here this ground floor between you know 64 minus 76 db this stuff was up in here on the gw so now that we cut the grass back and it's down another 20 db then this the weeds look taller right and some of the weeds you couldn't see in the grass now you can because now they're appearing see some of these spikes right along here right around the minus 52 so they were down in the noise floor of the gw but we did see a couple spikes here on the gw i think what we saw is these being combined into one and this one so on the gw so let's look at the gw again you see these two combined right here i think that's what's being combined right there and then there's this one so I'm not sure about that, but if we look down at the Pico again, they're a different frequency. So yeah, I'm not, not too sure, but there are similar spikes and similar spaces. I mean, in similar amplitudes. But again, if you imagine the noise floor here on the Pico, right, right up in here, you can see how some of this stuff, you, 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 you wouldn't see these at all and you would not i don't think you'd see these either but you would see a couple of these now here let me show you what we can do here on this pico i think that's because 12-bit resolution we have better resolution to get uh pick out the spikes but also the frequency resolution right you have to have both and right now i'm set at 2.4 hertz so it's just a little bit better than the it's maybe not quite twice as good as the GW. So I can come up here to this bin and I can say, well, you know what? I want to go even better. I want to improve my, how many points I get. And so I can improve how many bins, how many, you know, mathematical things I'm going to do. So now it's it's better than twice because it's 1.2 hertz versus 4 hertz. But look at my collection time. It's almost half a second. So it takes half a second. That's why you see the movement down here a little bit shorter. It's taking half a second to do that. So I can go a little faster if I want. But you can see each time it's like doubling how much time. So if I go again... Yeah, now it's 1.6 seconds, but look at this, 300 millihertz. There's a little bit of a bug in here when I down, see that collection time? I have to kind of go back, so I have to go, tw I have, have to submit this as a bug. This is new software, it's a advanced release, so it's not fully released yet. So anyway, yeah, don't, 
worry about this this is pico 7 so there we go look at that 1.2 hertz we're doing pretty darn good right i'm gonna go a little bit faster so less than a hertz so we're better than a hertz resolution so yeah look at that now you notice the noise for it now it's below see here's minus 71 we're minus 71 is right across the skim of the grass right and so look at all these peaks and all this stuff that sticks out. Where if the noise floor, again, quick look at the GW. And then back here, the Pico. If you imagine the noise floor right here around 50, see 45, 58, so right up in here. If you imagine that noise floor up here, you don't see all that stuff. So, yeah. I think a combination of the 12 bits gives us better amplitude reading and the resolution gives us more detail between spikes. Now if we come down here and look again, 17.28 dB volts and 0.08 or 0.11%. Now just for fun. Let's go back to GW real quick. And let's look at the, I'm gonna increase the, uh, from eight watts all the way up to like 200 watts. Let's see what the noise, how, how that spectrum changes. I'm not gonna leave it there a long time because it gets hot. So it takes a moment or two, like I've said, to take the math. You can see the, uh, you can kind of notice the GW there, there there you see how it's taking that time to do the math okay let's increase it there we go that's 200 watts now takes a moment yeah look at the spikes now there's still there's a lot more above 40 they're between 20 and 40 so there's a lot around 30 to, to you know 20 to 30 probably 25 db whole bunch of spikes almost every frequency right every even an odd frequency. Now if we look down the Pico, you notice there's several little spikes around each frequency. That's that resolution bandwidth. But uh, uh, here's 30 dB right here. So here's 20, that's what we're seeing on the GW up there. Now again, the noise floor is way down here, but yeah, look at that. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out to you. And uh, show you the difference of the two scopes and how they handle a spectrum. All right, just want to show you the different filters you can use. You come down here, go to the, the bins, I think it is. Yeah, the window function. And it's kind of like, you know, the window's kind of like that notch filter I was talking about. So there's Blackman. Look at that big list of filters you can use. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty big list. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope that, you know, made sense and gave you a chance to look at the Pico GW Instex, see what you think of those. And, hey, I want to thank the Patreons. Two thumbs up to you guys. Uh, appreciate your support. And I want to say thanks to everybody for watching the videos and commenting and all that. That's great. Let me know if I should do another video on just FFT or Spectrum. And I think I'm going to definitely be doing some more on these some more reviews on especially the pico and i can do some more on the gw now you can search the channel i've done some fft stuff in the past and so maybe that might be helpful yeah this today was just a quick explanation hopefully that wasn't more confusing than helpful <laughs> but yeah so you know sometimes hearing it different ways for different people and multiple times uh you know, it's helpful. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.